Hi everyone, today's video is going to be about parking. Now on your driving test, your examiner may very well ask you to park five or six times doing different exercises. We're going to have a look at this specifically in where you should and where you shouldn't. So the examiner has just asked you to find somewhere safe to park in on the left. First thing you need to do is check your mirrors. We need to see what's going on around and then start scanning out into the distance. Don't look too close. Try and scan at least 10 seconds ahead. Now, we can't park here because we've got a pedestrian crossing. Pedestrian crossings, the zigzags on the left mean no parking. So we can't park there. We've got a yellow line all the way on the left so honestly with the park cars a little touch further up you would just keep going it looks as though there's a cut out area to the left behind the van however it's a bus stop so we can't park anywhere there now we cannot have any space here on the left because there's now a double yellow line so all i'm going to do is just continue through the lights now on your test it's unlikely but it still could happen but it's unlikely that your examiner would tell you in a situation like that where there's nowhere to park over the next two or three hundred yards usually they're going to tell you to park where there are a few opportunities up ahead it's not necessarily going to be all clear where there's everywhere is going to be free to park it may very well be that you've got a few little things that you you've got to look out for but get planning and that's the first thing so we'll get back onto it we've got a situation up ahead where there's a police car that's pulled someone in now you could possibly park in some of these spaces on the left but not in front of a driveway make sure that you're parking next to a taller piece of curb and not a dropped curb but i'm just going to clear the situation where the police have pulled the car in now, anywhere else down here would be pretty good, but we've got a couple of bus stops, so I'm not gonna park opposite this one on the right, or in fact, on the one on the left. So we've got a junction on the right, so probably I'm thinking now, after the camper van, somewhere in. So I'm gonna check, there's a car close, so I'm gonna use my uh, signal and use my brake lights early, and I'm gonna get slow before I get close to the curb. I'm gonna make sure I roll until I'm next to the taller piece of curb and not blocking a driveway and then we stop and secure your car. It's that simple. Make sure you're also listening to your examiner carefully because don't forget we have to do or potentially have to do the manoeuvre the pull up and park on the right and then reverse. So listen carefully to the instructions and whether it's to the left or to the right. Now, let's have a look at some more places where we shouldn't park and the reasons why. Now, we've already mentioned yellow lines. I just wanna quickly go through what they actually mean because people sometimes, believe it or not, struggle with them. Yellow lines are there to stop people parking see the one in front of us it's a double yellow and that generally is all the time so no parking on double yellow lines but that actually doesn't mean that you can't pull in and drop someone off so here in this scenario I could pull up on the left if I was letting someone out but that's not going to be good enough on your test your examiner is specifically asking you to park so you have to make certain that the yellow lines are going to finish so you can park in just after. Again, don't finish in front of driveways. But what do single yellow lines mean? Well, actually, they still mean no parking, but they're usually controlled by signs at the side of the road. They're usually on posts and little small blue signs which tell you the times of operation of those yellow lines but the same thing is going to apply on your driving test generally the single yellow lines are daytime no parking so you're going to be taking your test during the day so again avoid single yellow lines in fact avoid any lines whatsoever 
Here's some lines that you definitely shouldn't park on, but also we can go a stage further. School markings or yellow zigzags, you shouldn't even stop, which is clearly displayed in the sign to the left. If this was Saturday or Sunday, or before 8am or after 5pm, this would be totally fine, but as it was a weekday, it's not. It provides massive risk to kids if there was any about, and it would definitely fail a driving test. Parking near pedestrian crossings, or on the zigzags, can be really dangerous because you'll force other cars to have to overtake you and then that obscures views of pedestrians so make sure you leave them clear have a look at these examples these two clips are of the same crossing but approaching from different directions just look how badly the van is parked if a kid ran out from that no one from the opposite direction would see them whatsoever and this is why it's really dangerous this area must be a hotspot for poor parking because it seems to be going on absolutely everywhere. The BMW is fully on the pavement, but then the white Vauxhall is again obscuring view for the crossing. Parking on the zigzag lines could give you three points on your license and a hundred pound fine. Parking near junctions is also a no-no. It should be at least a couple of car lengths or about 10 metres or at least 10 metres from junctions and that's not just junctions coming out like I am at the moment it's junctions turning in so make sure you leave them clear because parking near junctions obscures view actually any entrances that people could be coming out sometimes can cause problems just have a look at this speed camera van and see what you think about their parking so have a look at the speed camera van up near the petrol station and particularly pay attention to the red vehicle exiting and look how much the van parked where they are are obscuring people's view coming out of the petrol station. I think they need a lesson on road safety if you ask me. Now before I forget I've got to mention this one as well and it's because uh, some taxi drivers have got a little bit of a chip on the shoulder. Don't park in taxi ranks either. Taxi drivers have got a job to do. They provide a service to pick people up and to take people where they want to go. So make sure you don't go in any taxi ranks as well. Another little thing on this road I'd like to point out is don't park in the, what I call H markings outside people's drives and houses make sure you leave them clear and I will mention that before regarding leave people's driveways alone but sometimes it's rubber stamped if you like with those white H's parked in front of the driveway or, or lined in front of their driveway so leave them alone as well. People always park in bus stops when they shouldn't do also. Just look at the problems this bus has getting to the bus stop to allow the passengers to safely board, all because this lady is really lazy. She could have parked loads of places and just walked 50 metres. Another thing that I'd like to add is don't park opposite bus stops as well, because it narrows the road space for other people to fit through. Literally, just move a little bit further up the road. Now, what about this one? The holy grail if you like. Parking on curbs. A car on the left parked on a curb. Well, and it's near a bus stop to be honest, so it ain't the best. But we can see down this road that there are a lot of cars parked on the curb. Is that allowed? Well, in London, no. Okay, so if you're doing your lessons in London, no, you're not allowed to park on a curb. But outside of London, it's a little bit different. Now, it's not really, it's not a law, it's a bylaw if you like, and it's not gonna be a massive, massive issue if you were to ever put your wheel up a curb like that, even in your driving test. Now, if you think of the size of this road that we're coming down, if 
you had a, a fire in one of these houses, how could the fire engine get down the road if everyone was parked off the kerb? Well, it's not so bad with this situation that we've got in front because there's only cars parked on one side. But the road, as you can see, is too narrow for a car to be parked off the kerb on the road one side and off the kerb on the road the other side. And there wouldn't be enough room to go through. However, there's other things to consider if you're ever putting your wheel up a kerb. What you need to make sure is that you're always going to leave enough room for maybe a pram to go past or a wheelchair user to go past you on the far side or, or away from the road. This one on the right, perfect example. All right, it's done well. It's parked on the uh, just up the kerb and it's left plenty of room on the pavement for people to get through. So that's okay. If you do park too far and use all of the road space, you're gonna be forcing pedestrians to walk in the road and that's dangerous. So we can't do that. So again, if you look at this scenario, we've got enough space to go through, but look at the two white vehicles in front of us. If they were parked, on the road there wouldn't be enough space so that's the reasoning behind it in some situations however you may be told that you can park on a curb even without any bylaws now if that's the case make sure you go really slow and edge your wheels up at a 45 degree angle so you reduce the risk to damaging the side wall of your tire if there were any pedestrians using the pavement, literally stop your manoeuvre, let them finish before you continue. So as you can see that there's plenty of things we've got to think about when your examiner asks you to park in. Try and plant nice and far, like I said a little bit earlier, try and plant 10 seconds out in front of you. Don't think that you've got to park instantly. You don't, but, you also can't take too long to do your park. Your examiner has a set route and they've got certain things that they need to sort of do and cover during that route. So you can't take three miles to park in. So look and plan, be really aware of people around you, use your mirrors. Just think of those things that we've said about. Is there anything else that you can think of about parking that maybe I haven't covered on? If so, leave it down in the comments i'm sure to look at it and i'll try and get to it if i can thanks as always for watching i'll see you all soon